Okay. So what we did is that since all of us here are very familiar with this, these ones, we will just make it very quick. So we talked about types of sentences in Arabic language. And I had mentioned that in Arabic language, we have two types of sentences on the broader face. The two types of sentences, we have those that are complete and those that are incomplete. Under each, there are types. So first we look at the meaningful sentences or complete sentences or beneficial sentences. So we said that now on the our word here is anwa. Anwa is the plural of now on. And now on means type. So if I say now on min al hayawanat, a type of animal. Now on min al hayawan or now on min al hayawanat, a type of animal. Now on min al toam, type of food. Said anwa al jumla bimana, types of sentences. Al jumla tul mufida, al mufid, when we say something is mufid, is beneficial. So we say al jumla tul mufida, yani al jumla leti tu oti ma anan kamilen. Ay al jumla leti nastafidu minha ma anan kamilen. A sentence that we get a complete meaning from. A sentence that we get a complete meaning from that is what we call al jumla tul mufida. So if I say the boy went to school, khalas, it's a complete sentence. But if I say the boy or went to school alone, I haven't said anything. So under the sentences that are qualified as al jumla tul mufida, in Arabic language, we have just two types of such. You can just make a simple map or a sketch kind of anwar al jumla, then you break two bars like that, one al jumla tul mufida, one al jumla uh, mufida, al jumla ghayr al mufida. So you have beneficial sentence or complete sentence and incomplete sentence. Under the complete sentence, you put this one here. The first is al jumla tul ismiya, al jumla tul al ismiya. And we've said that since we hear al ism in there, it means that it has something to do with a noun or name. So when we say al-jumla tul ismiya, bimana sentence that begins with a noun. Ay al-jumla leti tabda'u bil ism. A sentence that begins with a noun and it is complete. So when we say a nominal sentence, we mean as a complete sentence that begins with a noun, and al-ism. And then we gave examples of such Al waladu tawilun, al walad bin our now, al bintu jamilatun, the girl is beautiful, al tiflu yala abu, the child is playing, al rajulu, al rajulu ya akulu, the man is eating, al tayru. So when we look at this, we realize that they are all nouns. And there is something I said here. How do we identify that this word that is beginning the sentence is a noun? I gave you then some signs of nouns. Normally, when you are learning Arabic in the mainstream, not like a short course like this, in the mainstream, we, we start teaching you what is kalam, what is considered kalam, speech in Arabic language. Then under that, we teach you aksamul kalam. Aksamul kalam, by that we mean types of words, types of words in Arabic language. And the types of words in Arabic language, we seek to teach you that we have verbs, nouns, and Articles or particles, that is the huruf. And in that, you will be taught next characteristics or um, nature, the nature of nouns. You'll be taught the nature or characteristics of verbs, and then the nature or characteristics of huruf. There are neither three types of words we have in Arabic. You'll be taught each of them, their characteristic. But because this is a short course, we didn't come from that angle, though we've learned almost all those things. The, I gave signs of a noun so that when you see a sentence, you can identify that, oh, this word that is beginning is a noun, and then it's a nominal sentence. And we've said that part of the signs of a noun is for you to have alif elam. A word coming with alif elam is a noun. So any word that comes with alif elam, al-waladu, 
البنتو السيارة الغرفة الباب all those words that have alif elam or take alif elam they are nouns also we gave another sign we said this tanween here the tanween sign whether fathatain whether dommatain whether kesratain if a word takes tanween at the end if a word takes tanween then the word is a noun verbs do not take tanween neither do particles take it so Words that take tenuin are also nouns. When we say tenuin, we mean the double vowel, whether two fatha, two kesra, two domma. And you see all these words I'm talking about, those that take alif and lam, the alif and lam can be taken off. It's a peripheral. Those that take the dommatain, the dommatain can be reduced to one domma. Those that take the tenuin, the tenuin can be reduced to one. Okay. And then also we gave another sign. We said tau marbota. I'm sure you are keeping notes of this if you didn't have them before. We said when a word takes tau marbota, it means the word is a noun. It is, it is only nouns that take tau marbota. So you have the alif el as a sign. That is the definite article. You have the tenuin, which is the indefinite article. And you have the tau marbota as a sign. So basically you have three signs now. Since you learned idafa, we learned idafa here. Idafa is also considered as one of the characteristics of nouns. Because when you look at the idafa constructions, it is only nouns that are able to that are able to form the idafa. You can use a harf to make idafa, you can use a fail to make idafa. It is only nouns that are able to make the idafa construction. That is a possession. Okay. And then we moved on to. Um, please, if I should forget, when I'm done with this, I will show you the difference between a, why do we have a verbal sentence and why do we have a nominal sentence, inshallah. If I forget, please, somebody should remind me. It's a very important detail. The verbal sentence. We said that is any sentence that begins with a fail. I aljumla leti tabda'u bifailin. A sentence that begins with a verb, a complete sentence in that, for that matter. And then we, we give examples here. So you see this word here, it doesn't have alif elam, it doesn't have tanwin, it doesn't have tam or buta. All of them in the beginning here, all of them do not have alif elam, they do not have tam or buta, they do not have tanwin. We have yala abu tiflu. With regards to the meanings and all that, I think um, you have them uh, at your disposal, so you can check them easily. What I wanted to draw our attention to, and I'm sure now we know the Arab, which is very important. Let me reiterate that. When you have a verb, the next thing you are looking for is the who is in charge of the verb, who is the subject, which I will prefer to call the doer. Who is the doer of this action word? You know, verbs are action words. When you see an action, an action word, you are looking for who is doing the action. The one doing the action in Loga Arabia, in Arabic language, takes Dhamma. It ends with Dhamma. So you see, Yal Abu Atiflu. Yal Abu Atiflu. The child is playing. I'm able to say the child is playing. I'm able to uh, link the playing to the child because the, of the Dhamma here. Now, if the Dhamma is taken off, I can't say the child is playing. The Dhamma is the one telling me that, okay, it is the child who is doing the play. Ya'akulu rajulu. Oh, so a rajulu, he is the fa'il. He is the what? Fa'il. Fa'il bimana, the one doing the fa'il. The word is fa'il. You can check in the chat there. Fa'il bimana, the one doing the action. So ya'akulu is the fa'il. A rajulu is the fa'il. It will become more apparent here when you have a sentence that has a verb, a fa'il, and what we call maf'oolun bihi. The object, the fa'il is the dua, and the object is called what? Maf'oolun. Maf'oolun bihi. Like this. So you have the fa'il, 
عفوا uh, we have the fi'l here yaktubu is the fi'l at-talibu because of the dhamma it is the fa'il al-wajiba because of the fatha it is the maf'ulun bihi so the recipient of the action the doer of the action is called what fa'il and it takes dhamma then it ends in the nominative case that is what we say because sometimes you don't see the dhamma there are other signs of that replace dhamma but does the same function but then basically for us here we say dhamma al-wajiba so i say the student is writing the assignment al-wajib the assignment i'm able to say he's writing the assignment because the assignment here is taking fatah let's say i mistakenly say yaktubu taliba al-wajibu i give the fatah to the taliba and al-wajib i give it dhamma the meaning will now become the assignment is writing the student i hope you are all following on this level the moment you change the vowels you can't tell me this is not logical you've changed it and you've changed the meaning you can't say anything again you've changed the arab the grammatical analysis you change the meaning arabic is a language of sounds we don't slang in arabic language there is no slangs it's english that we slang you say oh this guy is the way he he speak is english somebody will say you get it somebody will say you get it Arabic, you don't do that. You, the moment you say you get it, you say something else. It's a language of sound. So if you say yaktubu taliba al wajibu, al wajibu becomes the doer. Al taliba becomes the object. So you say the assignment is writing the student. So you should be careful about this. Yes, just yesterday, my brother, he he just even entered here. He he was narrating to me in salat where he corrected one imam. The imam wasn't getting the correction. Something like yahdillahu. لنورهي من يشاء يهدي الله الله guys and the imam read يهدي الله يهدي الله بمعنى some somebody guides Allah we need to find that somebody you know it's a very wrong so in that case it changes the meaning of the sentence so you have to correct such kind of errors you don't let it slip you need to correct the person until the person gets it right يهدي الله and you read yahdillaha you've turned the meaning completely so you need not to be allowed to move so we should be careful about these signs so if you see like this yashrabu al-kalbu al-ma'a the dog is drinking the water so anytime the one doing the action will take dhamma nama talibu the student slept ja al-fata So you see why I said that the dhamma is the basic sign. Sometimes you don't see the dhamma. Whereas like al-fata, the alif al at the end, they can't take any vowel. They are not able to take any vowel. But then it is understood that it is the fa'il because it came after the fa'il. And there is no other word to cause us confusion. Ja al-fata. We don't say ja al-fata'u. The alif al maqsura here, when it ends a word, it does not take any vowel. Whereas like Mustashfa, Mustafa, I will say Ra'aytu Mustafa, Ja'a Mustafa, Zahabtu ilal Mustashfa, I went to the hospital. You can't end with any vowel because Alif al maqsura when it ends a word, it doesn't take any vowel. Okay. So that is the, those are the two sentences two meaningful sentences in arabic language we have the nominal and then we have the verbal sentence but then we come to those that do not make meaning um let me see about uh, sharing this file there is a file that i would want to share i wish you could just explain the meanings of the the difference between the nominal sentence and the verbal sentence in a bit okay there was this book i was reading yesterday i would want to show you let me just add it to this we can all see the new book i've posted right
Oh, okay, Jamil. I'm zooming it. The font is not, it's an old print. So yesterday I was going through it and then I would want to show you something. So basically, um, the nominal the nominal sentence, you know, nouns do not have any deal with time. Unlike verbs, verbs they have time factor. So you say, "Zahaba uh, bimana he went." It's a past tense, so everybody knows the time factor in it. When you say "Yazhabu uh, bimana he's going," when you say "Yazhabu bimana he's going." Sayez habu, he will go. But then, when you say azahabu, azahabu, that is the verb, the nominal, uh, the verbal noun from zahaba, the verbal noun from zahaba, azahabu, that is going. Now, this going, when we say going, you can't say going is in the past, I mean the now. You can't say going is in the present. You can't say going is in the past. Yani, it is just a now. Going means going, you need to go. So as the help does not have time factor, like I say, Akela, he ate. Ya Akulu, he's eating. Al Aklu, eating, the now eating. It doesn't have a time factor. So verbs refer to things that can accept changes. When I use verb in any sentence, it shows that things can change. Let's say I want to describe any of you. Then I say, oh, Asayida Halima Kerima. Asayida Halima Kerimatun. What this means is that Karima Biman are benevolent. She's kind, she's generous. Sister Halima is generous. Then, oh, uh, please, what did you hear last? What did you hear last, if I can just speak from there? I want us to get a detail here and I wouldn't want us to miss it. When we are done with these ones, the book itself is just a, a speed work. We just run through. Uh, the Haba is the, 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 those ones. Please, can you hear now? I said at the hub at the hub like this. Can you hear now? Please, can, all, can we all hear? The others, can we all hear? Because I, this this detail, I wouldn't want us to miss it. You're welcome. Please, the others, can we all hear?
Okay. I don't know, maybe network interference or something. <clears throat> How is it now? How is it now? Can we hear? Okay, okay, alhamdulillah. So, please, at any point that you don't hear me, do well to call my attention. Because I wouldn't want anybody to miss any de detail. Any point that you don't hear me, you don't hear me well, please do well to call my attention. Let me reduce this further. So I said that when we say the Haba, the manner he's gone, it is in the past. When we say yes, Habu, he is going. Yes, Habu, he is going, the present tense. But when we make the verbal now, that is the gerund from it. Yani we create the noun, the noun which is going. Yani he is going, left me alone. That is not a verb. If I say he is going, it's a verb. He went, it's a verb. But if I say he's going there, was no good. That going here is a verbal noun. It's not a verb. I hope you all understand that about English. Same way with the Arabic. If I say al zahabu, al aklu, eating. When I say uh, al julusu, sitting, al julusu, sitting. It doesn't show whether it is in the past or the present. Or so we say that nouns refer to something being fixed, but verbs refer to something that is susceptible to change, something that easily changes, it accepts changes. Because it has time factor in it. So if I say he went, it gets to a time maybe he doesn't go. If I say he is going, maybe he gets, it gets to a time he stops. But if I say he's a goer, I'm kind of describing him with that sefer. I'm using the noun to describe him. Just an example I said with, I said, let's something like a Sayyida Halima, Kerimatun. When I say, when I say a Sayyida Halima, Kerimatun, Bimana, this is a sefer with her. It's a firm adjective with her. She's, she's generous. That is her character. This refers to more of something that lasts than me saying, Asaida Halima took criminals. She honest people. When I use the verb, it's not as stronger as when I use the noun. Okay. So in the Quran, you find, in Allah, Gafurun, that is a nominal sentence. Yagfirullahu, it's a verbal sentence. Allahu Gafurun, nominal. Yagfirullahu, verbal. Which one is stronger? Allahu Gafurun. The nominal sentence is stronger and refers to more of emphasis than the verbal sentence. Did we all get everything up to this point? Did we get everything up to this point? Okay, and the others, please, did we get everything up to this point?
since they can't hear me. Yeah, I want to see whether the others can, uh, the silence from that angle is. Okay. Okay. So I said that verbal sentence basically, uh, as Maria requested, verbal sentence basically, because verbs have time factor in them and time changes, because verbs have time factor in them, because time changes, it makes verbal sentence below the nominal sentence because verbal sentence refers to the fact that since we are using a verb, then there will come a point where the action will stop, the action will change or something like that. If I say, yes, the habul wala do, the boy can stop. But if I use a noun, it refers to more of emphasis than the verb. Just the example I said, to krimu, Anas, I say, has he mara to criminals? This woman, she honest people. She's generous to people. That is a verb. To krimu is a verb. So it can be that it's just now. She's just doing it now. After this, she stopped. But when I say has he mara keri matun, keri matun, I've made the to krimu, I've made it a noun as an adjective for her. This is more lasting than when I say to criminals. So basically the bottom line, verbs have time factor in them, which we all know even in English, not even an Arabic matter. But nouns don't have time factor in them. When I say uh, school, lesson, there is no time. In, you can't know when, le what lesson I'm talking about. Studies, when I say studies, studies doesn't have time factor in them. But when I say that is durus, durus, studies. But when I say darasa, darasa, he studied, that is in the past. Yet durusu, in the present. So when it accepts time, because time changes, it makes the thing not lasting. Okay. If you are all cool to this extent, I don't know that the font of this book, if you can all see it, but then I will be reading it. So we need no worry much. I was reading about Basmala, our own Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I was reading about our own Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And then it says, Fil Basmalati, Basmala Bimana, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Yani he's going to give us, we don't even need this. He says, you know when we say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, it is a phrase. Bismillah Rahman Rahim is a phrase. Please, what we are going to do is at any point where you are cut off, whether in sound or in understanding, alert me in the message. Let me know where, at which point you just got cut off. You couldn't understand again. Because we are getting into the Quran. When we say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, what? It's an incomplete sentence. In the name of Allah, what, what, what has happened? So maybe you say, I'm going to do this in the name of Allah, then you've told me something complete. So scholars have proposed, have uh, deliberated on the matter, and some have said that. It can either be beginning with a verb, where we say abtadi'u, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Abtadi'u, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Or ibtidai, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. That I am beginning in the name of Allah, 
I am beginning. I abtadi u or abda u as we are used to. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That is it here. So he says that this bismi perhaps is attached to word like this abtadi u. I am beginning. So we say when you say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in essence, you said abtadi u. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I am beginning whatever I'm going to do in the name of Allah most gracious, most merciful. You've given a complete sentence, starting with a verb. That is one face of it. Some have also said that no, perhaps the what begins the Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is a noun instead. It's a noun instead. And the noun is what? Ibtidai. So if I say, I am beginning. Ibtida means beginning. Ibtida means beginning. The word is like this. Let me write that in the chat. The word is like this. Ibtida beginning, which means beginning. So what did he do? He just added the yai to link it to himself. Ibtidai, I my beginning, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, is in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Ibtidai, he is beginning with a noun. My beginning, or my starting, whatever I'm going to start, is in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. So we have two faces. Either Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the, the phrase we have has a hidden expression. The hidden expression is either a verb or a noun. A verb is abtadi u, I am beginning. The noun would be ibtidai. And what I just, the introduction I just gave about verbal sentence and nominal sentence, when you are explaining the Quran, when you are explaining the Quran, this is what tafsir should be doing. Who is going off? Stalima. Oh. Let me see about Shiro joining. Uh, this Talima is going off. Let's, let's watch a little. Getting a stable network is really a problem. Okay, since she's back. Okay. So with the introduction I gave about nominal sentences and verbal sentences, that verbal sentences refer to more of something being fixed and more emphasized than verbs. So when you look at this, when it says, Ibtidai, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It's more stronger than Abtadi U Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. When you use a verb, there is an item of renewal in it. Let's go down. He says that Al Aula, Al Aula, that is most preferred, fi mutaalik Bismillahir and Yakuna, fi'ilan, mudari and lianahu al asl, fil amal wa tamasuk. Yani he's saying that with regards to Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, when we use the verb abtadi u, is much preferred or is much better. We don't say it like abtadi u Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It is a matter of knowledge. You just conceiving that abtadi u Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He's saying that why is the verb most preferred and the root? He said wali anahu yufidu atajadud al istimrari. Continuous renewal at tajadud al istimrari. Because when you use a verb, it, it, it gives the notion of 
continuous renewal. I'm telling you, Ubimana, you will rebegin. It will keep changing because it is susceptible to time. When you say, I'm beginning, you will stop, and then you come and begin again. Come and say, Bismillah rahman rahim You will stop, you come and begin something again. So because of that, this is what in Balaga, this is not our general Arabic that we've been doing. This is it, Al-Balaga rhetorics, the science of rhetorics. And this is these are the things that Tafsir should be calling our attention to. But the problem is the fact that our system is not that familiar with Arabic. You, if you go doing this, it will look weird. So the word to complete the phrase is more preferred to be a verb because Bismillah rahman rahim we keep stopping and starting things. We keep stopping and starting things. Even in the Quran, Fatiha starts with Bismillah rahman rahim You end Surah Al-Baqarah, picks another Bismillah rahman rahim So you say it again. Since you stop and say it again, then the verb is preferred because it has that those characteristics. But the now, when you use the now, it refers to Adaymuma. Look at this word. Adaymuma was thubut. Adaymuma. When you use a noun, it gives the denotion. It, or it denotes something being persistent. When you say ibtida e bismillah rahman rahim, it looks like you are going to stay on that bismillah rahman rahim till whatever time there is. So adaymuma was thubut, almost both refer to persistent and being fixed. Okay, these are secondary details. That is why I went to the book I went to is not our level at all. This uh, uh, some voluminous book like that. I was just reading through and then I thought it wise to just call our attention to why Arabic language has nominal sentence and verbal sentence. In everyday language, verbal sentence is more popular. You hardly have walad yadhabu. You see yadhabu walad. Verbal sentence is more popular in our everyday language and the nominal sentence is used too, but then these are the difference. The verbal, sent, the verbal sentence refers to at-tajadud, the possibility of being renewed. And the nominal sentence refers to at daimuma or thubut, yani persistence and being fixed. Okay, now let's leave this material. This is quite on another level. Okay, we come back to our file. So we are done with the nominal sentence, verbal sentence. Then we come to the incomplete sentences. How many minutes do we have? Okay, we have some time. We come to the incomplete sentences and we said there are shibhu jumla. Okay, I needed to have edited this again, uh, but then it's fine. Phrases are basically shibhu jumla. When we say a phrase, Something, when you say shibhu, to look like something. So when you say even shibhu redwan, I need a look alike of redwan. So shibhu jumlatin, I need a look alike of a sentence. So it's not a sentence, but it looks like it because it is also formed from two words. A sentence is made up of two words or more. So when you have two words, it looks like a sentence, but it's not a sentence. It doesn't give a complete meaning. Under the phrases, the prepositional phrase is one, which is made up of this, the combination of a preposition and a noun. I think that I've, I've cut something here, but then I'll edit that in the file and then I'll share it with you. So a combination of a preposition, a harf jar, and an ism, and an ism. In this case, the meaning the two words produce is not complete. Like you have something like fil fasli, fil madrasati. And you've learned that when you have a preposition, it only comes before nouns. And when they come like this, the noun that come after them end in kesra. So fil madrasati, min al madrasati, fil fasli, min al fasli. Prepositions when they come, il al muhandisi. When preposition comes, the noun that comes after it should end in kesra. That is that what they do. And then we had the adverbial phrase, where we have the adverb is the zorf, where we have adverb and a noun. And I said that zorf can also mean a container, any an envelope, a rubber. An envelope is called zorf. 
Okay. So zarf something like adverb of place fawqa tahta amama tahta anda fawqa above or atop amama in front of wara'a behind all those kind of words are adverbs so when you have that qabla words like qabla these are adverbs of place tahta adverb of place fawqa adverb of place amama wara'a all those are adverb of place something like qabla ba'da all those two are adverb of time adverb of time so we have zarful makan zarful makan which is adverb of place let me see about putting it there zarful makan you can just note it zarful makan will be adverb of place and then we have zarful zaman zarful zaman which will be adverb of time like kabla before ba'da after those ones are uh, zarful zaman then we have zarful makan also so when any of such comes, that now that comes after that also ends in kesra, same way. And they both do not make a complete sentence. Like under the chair, atop the tree, before the meeting, after the class, those are not complete sentences. And then we have sifatun wa mausuf, that is adjectival phrase. That is the third phrase, adjectival phrase where you have the adjective, sifa, ah, the adjective, which is the sifa, and the mausuf, the noun being described. So if I say al waladu at tawilu, the tall boy. In English, we've said that the adjective comes first. So in English, you say the tall boy. Arabic, we say the boy tall. Al waladu, the boy at tawilu. Al waladu tawilu. Or waladun tawilun, a tall, a tall boy. And as we've given in our lessons, the relationship between the adjective phrase, between the mausuf and the sifa, they both agree in gender, they both agree in number, they both agree in um, definite and indefiniteness. If the mausuf is definite, you say al waladu, you need to say at tawilu. If you say waladun, you need to say tawi lun. The adjective should agree with the structure of the noun it is describing, which we've explained further in our lessons. If any of that is unclear, please you can call my attention. So examples of the adjectival phrases like this: ones without alif and lam here. You can see this ones, there are no alif and lam. And you look at the ones down here, there is alif and lam, alif and lam. The noun has alif and lam, and so the adjective would also come with alif and lam. So they must agree in that regards. And when the noun has dhamma ten like this, what the vowel the noun ends with, it is the same vowel that the adjective should also end with. So bintun qasiratun, waladun qasirun, they must agree in gender. So you see bintun, girl, so qasiratun, there's a tamar boot. Waladun qasirun, albintu. So at tawilu, this should be one dhamma. Al bintu at tawilu. Al bina u tawilu. Al bina u at tawilu. A tall building. So that is also the adjective of phrase. And then we looked at the idafa. I think that was the last one, right? Yeah. You look at the idafa, that is the possessive phrase. In English, we say the off case or the apostrophe s. <laughs> In this case, one of the mentioned nouns possesses the other, whether physically or meaning-wise. In English, when of is used in the possessive phrase, the possess is stated first before the possessor. So I'll say the car of the teacher. The car is mentioned first, and it is the possessed, the car of the teacher. But when apostrophe S is used, like the son of the president, the son is the possessed. It's possessed by the president. The president owns the son. And when apostrophe S is used, the positions change. We have the president's son. Now the president is coming first and the son is coming second. In Arabic language, it is fixed. The possessor is always mentioned after the possessed. 
as shown below. Ibn al-Ra'is, whether the president's son or the son of the president, Arabic language, it is Ibn al-Ra'is, and you can only write it this way. There is no other technique to go about it. This is just the only way you have to write it. Ibn al-Ra'is. Abdullahi, Abd is possessed, is possessed by Allah. Rasulullah, Rasul is possessed by Allah. I said possession can be meaning wise or physically, not like the person that is in your pocket. It can be in your pocket, it can be in terms of meaning. And we have Ra'isu Dawlati, the head of the state, the president. Ra'isu Dawla, a Dawla is the state. What happens in a possessive case? The possessor, which is mentioned second, always ends in Kesra. So Abdullah, his name must always end in Kesra. When you have any Abdullah, the name would always end in Kesra. It's always Abdullahi. Abdullahi. It is just that we normally do not pronounce the ending vowel in Arabic language. We say Abdullah. Khalas, Abdullah. But then to pronounce everything, we say Abdullahi, Ibn Raisi, Rasulullah. And Nabiullah. Okay. So that is that with the um, this file that we looked at. Inshallah, if there is anything that is unclear with the vocabulary list, you have it. So that is just for reading and understanding. If there is anything that I said with regards to the kawaid, with regards to the explanations, with regards to the Juha video, if there is anything that you have to say, please you can go ahead, inshallah. We have some 10 minutes. Can you see two? This is this are revision time, so you need to bring out a lot. Let's be sharing. Allah. Please, are, are there any questions, any inquiries? Can you even hear me in the first place? No, they are not the same. Uh, they, 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 meet, they meet at a point and they depart at some point. So when you say Qaeda, an Arab comes under Qaeda. Qaeda is basically ruling. And how would they, it's among the Qawaid is that, let's say they are almost the same, almost the same. Among the, something like Qaeda, I can say, when you have a, 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 a idafa, the mudaf can never take Alif El Lam. That is a Qaeda. You know, but it's not a Arab. The Mudaf does not take Alif and Lam, and the Mudaf does not take Tanween. I'm not doing a Arab yet. In Arab is when I tell you the Mudaf will take the grammatical position of wherever it finds itself in the sentence. The Mudaf Ilay is always Majrur, it always takes Kesra. That is when I'm teaching you in Arab. In Arab has to do with the Harakat and how they change and all that. But Qaeda, encompasses the Arab and other things. Qaeda is basically ruling or law. You know, I don't know if that's clarified.
Okay, you all come back. And I hope we are all practicing our Arabic. You need to be practicing, as I said, you need to be writing things. You need to be trying and be speaking the little that you have. You need to be practicing them because as you've learned something little like this, if you don't apply them, if you don't read on, if you don't keep listening to Arabic videos, you stop. If you stop for one week and you come back, don't ever think you would be the same. You will be so, so, so backwards. That is why I don't like people missing, missing classes and not making it up with the video. I don't like people, when, particularly those who use our phones to connect to the class. And when a WhatsApp message pops down, you want to read it, you want to do things together, it doesn't help one bit. You need to be so focused on what you are doing, get it once and for all, and then you move on with your life. Keep on listening to the Arabic videos. For that one, one advice you shouldn't let go at all. The Arabic videos, keep on, just keep on. It keeps refreshing what you learned. Inshallah, if there are any inquiries, any questions we need to ask. <laughs> That's a lot, I'm sorry. Mimvash uh, is not correct in Arabic. It's colloquial Arabic. <laughs> it's colloquial Arabic. Mimvash is actually la yamfa. La yamfa. Like this. Uh, I say mimfash. Mimfash, actually. Mimfash. Like this. Okay, so this one here is colloquial. This is colloquial. Lani pigeon Arabic. Uh, and it means we have Memfash, they write it something like this, but it's not classical. It's actually what they what they made to make this is ma yamfa ma yamfa but the colloquial arabic is in such a manner ma yamfa like this but originally if you want to say it you say la yamfa la yamfa la yamfa man it doesn't help there's no benefit in it normally when you are bargaining with people at the market and they say bring 100 Pounds, you say, no, I'll give 50 pounds. They will tell you that I'm in fash. I'm in fash. When are your 50 pounds lying for? It doesn't help. When you colloquial Arabic, when you hear this meme and shin, meme, meme at the beginning of a word, and shin at the end, it means negation. Michael Tuhush. Lam Akulu. Or Ma Akel Tu. They would go to the, they would go, they would make it like Markel Tuhush. You see the meme at the beginning, the shin at the end, they have that kind of negation. Memfash. Some, some of them will say Mishanfa. They, they have a way of just saying these things. But it's colloquial. Ya Azul. What's that? It looks quite strange to me. Is there any occasion occasion you heard this in our book or something?
Was it in a book or somebody said it? Are they, are they Ghanaians? Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe they are speaking those kind of those things there. Yeah, Azul. <laughs> Sounds quite strange. You know, they have the some expressions like this. Even in uh, Egypt, similar. Yeah, Halwi, they have some expressions, weird, weird expressions. They have what they mean with it. It's peculiar to them. Any any further inquiries? If not, inshallah. Uh, in the case where we have any question, they are always available. If you have any complaints at all, they are always available, inshallah. You can refer to us at any time, inshallah. We will do our best to respond, inshallah. Please, let's take this thing serious. Let's take it serious. You know, I've always held the view that if you are not studying, if you are not studying, making any effort to understand the Quran, stop claiming I love the Quran and I love the Quran and I love the Prophet. How do you love it? How do you love Allah? How do you love the Quran? How do you love the Prophet? The message is giving you the relationship between you and Allah Subhanahu the rope of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The rope is there before you. You don't want to hold it and you are claiming too much. You need to make an effort. There is this guy who was in Mamubi or Nima. Also, let me just end this. Uh, then, 